YouTube, Super Auto Pets, overexplained. This video is meant for both people who are brand new to the game and also people who have put a couple of hours in. Although if you have put a couple of hours in, I do start off with a pretty uh, basic explanation. You know, you have 10 gold per turn, etc., etc. So it, you might want to skip through a little bit of the, the, the basics in the beginning for the... But I, I thought I'd put it there because it's supposed to be over-explained, so I got to explain everything. Uh, yeah, if you enjoy the content, man, if you learned something new, let me know down in the comments below. Hit the like button. Remember, 2K likes every single day for the next two weeks. If you're not already subbed. What heck are you doing, man? It's good content. Please subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. Mwah. My goal today is not to make you a 10-win gamer because this game is heavily based on RNG. And I might even go into my first run and get five, four wins. You know, I might get a couple of wins. This game does have a lot of RNG based around it. But my goal is, is that to make you a little bit smarter about the game, a little bit more knowledgeable about the nuances, this game is very similar to something like, you know, Blackjack, where you can increase your odds of winning, but it doesn't always guarantee you the win. Welcome to Auto Battlers. I am gonna be playing on the free to play pack so that you don't have to pay a single thing. This game is available on iOS, Android. It's uh, You can play it through a website or you can download it off Steam. This expansion pack is very fun. Only is like five bucks. It helps them get money. So yeah, you can play it absolutely free and pay on a pack, play on a pack of animals. You can play against just that own pack, but I like to play against all packs just because it's what I prefer. So I'll play against the free to play and pay to win is what they call it because you, you pay for it. Um, packs. So, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, I like to play arena. You can always always play versus. It's a little more complicated. I'm not very versed in versus. <laughs> but yeah, Doctor Otto Patussis at your service. Let's get into the arena. This is a game, by the way. <laughs> Super Auto Pets, right off the bat, is a game that you're never. You're not on a time crunch. It's very similar to Slay the Spire, where you're not on a time crunch. So literally, right now, oh, I. I had to go do my thing. You can literally do that immediately. At any time, you can walk away. It's very similar to that Slay the Spire in that sense that it, this requires none of your uh, attention fully for a certain amount of time unless you play Versus, but just play Arena. It's way better. Uh, to start off the game, the game has a number of things at the top that we're going to go left to right and we're going to address. You start off with 10 gold. That is every single round, you will be at exactly 10 gold unless you have something like a swan, a specific animal that gives you extra gold. But gold doesn't roll over between rounds, so use it. Use all of your gold every round. Every single thing in the shop will cost you three gold, except for one exception. That is the sleeping pill, which will only cost one gold. We'll get to that when we need to. But yeah, everything will cost three gold, except the sleeping pill. It costs one gold to roll, so you just refresh the shop. You get a new slew of units, and you get to pick from them. You start off with 10 hearts on the first two rounds. You will lose one heart if you lose, if you don't win your, your, your match. The second two rounds, so rounds three and four, you'll lose two hearts. And then on third round and up, you will lose three hearts. So it used to be on a four life system where you just lose, you could only lose four times in general, but they switched it. So now technically you could lose five times. It makes losing rounds early less impactful and you don't really get worried about it because a lot of the early rounds are more based on RNG of what you get in your shops and less based on your skill of picking out the right units that works for your build, right? Your goal is to get 10 trophies. That's just 10 wins. You beat dudes 10 times. And then here is the turn counter. The turn counter is very important. So you start off on turn one, obviously, imagine, where you can only see tier one units in your shop. That is indicated by this little dice down here. There's tier one through six level units at every single, uh, every odd number round. So rounds one, three, five, seven, nine, you will see a new pair or a new tier of units, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five, tier six, right? They will show up in your shop whenever you press that roll button. New, new tiers of units will show up. You'll also be able to see more units over time as well as higher tier food. So the food, you'll either have one or later on, you'll have two slots for the food. That doesn't get any more than that. But you will be able to see different kinds of food that will uh, increase in value over time. And we'll go over that as we get there. So yeah, um, good units to start off with in the early game. You usually want to see things that have two, three. Two, three is a really good thing. It can sometimes trade with two units. And then other things that give early buffs. That's if you're really wanting to go for wins. I think a beaver's not terrible early, but I don't think it's a very good unit. And I think a kind of units that you want to look for on free to play early on, otters, they're OP right now. They're probably going to get nerfed soon. Don't know how, but they're probably going to get nerfed soon. 
uh, as well as blue fishes, they are also OP as fuck. So let's go ahead and let's buy a blue fish. And then let's buy an otter. And it's going to guarantee to give that plus one, plus one buff to the blue fish. Because that's what the otter does. Anytime you buy it, he gives plus one, plus one to random dudes. And the blue fish is anytime he levels up, he's going to give plus one, plus one to all animals. That you level up by combining two, or excuse me, by three, by combining three of the same animal together. And you get to a level, uh, a level two and then three more and you'll get to a level three that's max level um and then we're probably gonna roll here because i don't really want to buy a plus one plus one i'd rather look for a better unit we run into another blue fish that's really good so what you could do here is you could combine these two units right because that's what you want to do but that only gives whenever you combine a unit it's going to take the the greater stats of whatever unit you have so if you this guy had more attack let's say this guy had four attack and this guy had four uh health it would make them a four plus four or a four four because those are the greatest stats it could have. And then it gives them plus one plus one. So you're technically losing out on a one, two of stats if you combine them right now. So instead, you just drag them to the front and you put them here and you've got an extra two, three of stats because you can always combine them later. We've expended all of our gold. It's time to go and fight another dude. You get to choose your name now. It's always very important. If you can ever be an alliteration, that's the most important thing. If you take away anything from my class, that you should always be an alliteration name. Currently, we cannot achieve the alliteration name. So now you go uh, immediately to the most sexual name that you can. Um, so let's go with the Shy Husband. Okay, come across a mosquito. He's going to deal one damage randomly to one of my units. Not that big of a deal, except it was. Makes it so we uh, tie the round, which is perfectly fine. Ties early are actually really fun. They're uh, ties early, although it's not a win. It's also not a loss. But I personally, in terms of my enjoyment of the game, I like getting ties early because it means that the game's going to go later, which means I get more chances to use higher tier, more fun units. So either way, uh, yeah, I really, really like to. <clears throat> uh, come back to the shop. We see double pig, not really that good. So a mechanic that we haven't talked about yet and I was wanting to save until now is the benefit of leveling up and combining units. Anytime that you level up and you you combine uh, three units together and you level them up to the next level, you will the the shop will open up with a new slot if available. If all slots are filled, because uh, if all the, the 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 shop is completely filled up with slots, you won't be able to see anyone. But you'll see a new unit from the next tier of units. So right now we can only see tier ones. So if we were to make a level two fish, we'd see a tier two unit. Uh, and again, every single odd round, remember that you see. Uh, the next higher tier unit. So next round, we'll be able to see tier two units. So that means if we combine, we'll see a tier three unit. So it kind of gives you, uh, it's, it, it's, it's been coined as the term scambit by uh, demand stands on, uh, on Twitch. So yeah, right now, I think in round two, it's usually not good to just, it's usually not good to go for stats. A, a pig early can be pretty good. He sells for an extra gold. So he's pretty, he's a pretty good buy sell, a good one round unit early on. But I, I don't think you necessarily need to focus on always getting the, the, the win. Because if we wanted to win this round right now, we'd want to buy this ant. The ant is a really good unit. When he faints, so when he dies, either in battle or out of battle, via that sleeping pill we were talking about, he will give plus two, plus one to a random unit. So he's a pretty strong early game unit, right? He not only is a 2-1, but he's also a 2-1 uh, in death. So he's technically a 4-2 worth of stats, the highest stat of any unit that exists. Um, so yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a really good buy. And that's if we wanted to win this round. But it's the early round, so... They're pretty RNG dependent of whether you win or lose already. So I find it better to set yourself up for success by instead rolling and looking for exactly something like this. You want to look for the units that you already have so you can combine next turn and you can get a bunch of uh, you can get a bunch of extra dudes. You can get or you can get that that the, the scambit off and see the the extra guy. You could go with a honey pot here. Honey pot's a really, really powerful food. It's actually fucking OP. It doesn't sound OP because it only gives a 1-1-B. One, one but if you put a honey pot on something and you put it into the back, it's essentially like a free plus one plus one that can't be damaged. So if this fish, this last fish, were to trade with the last unit, but he has honey on top of him, he's going to spawn the honey afterwards. Even if that guy had 150 attack, which can't exist. But if he had 150 attack and he killed my fish and my fish still traded with him, I would still win off of just a little 1-1 one, one dude spawning. So honey pots are really powerful. Definitely recommend. You could go with it here, but I'm a much more of a fan of rolling for some uh, for some more combines here. <clears throat> Definitely want to look for an otter if possible. No otters, no otters. We do find an otter that's really good, so 
we'll keep that for now and then let's end our turn honestly i think we have like a 40 percent chance of winning this round got a lot of two threes it's pretty good stats this guy trades twice this guy trades here that's pretty nice yeah i do believe we lose yeah we do go ahead and lose that's fine again it's an early loss he, he wins with his own little b kind of it's a cricket uh and we lose one little thing so uh, I, I, I recognize in chat that someone mentioned it that I didn't talk about it. You can freeze things in the shop where you just click on them and you can freeze it, meaning that they're going to take up that spot in the shop later, but then you can uh, keep them for a later round because I didn't have the money in order to be able to buy him this round. So you can uh, freeze them to buy him the next round. Yeah, because <clears throat> again, they cost three gold. So let's go ahead and combine here. We could go ahead and combine again. The, the thing with the plus one, plus one to all of your friends, it's going to be a little bit underused if we combine now. Because not only is it only going to go to two friends, right? The otter, I don't expect to keep very long. I don't see him sticking around that long. We're not really getting too many levels on him as of now. He's going to be good stats, but I don't see him sticking around very long. So I would rather... Uh, I would rather take a more healthy unit, a, a unit that I might want to keep longer. Uh, and also, if it gives the plus one, plus one to the fish, if I ever combine this, the fishes together to get a level three, it, it wastes the stats because, again, the plus one, plus one is all that the fish gets when it combines. So it's a waste of stats of, of going over. Not a terrible thing, again, to do in the short term if I'm wanting to just win rounds, but I think it might be better to roll here for something just like a little bit more high value that I don't mind running. I don't want to roll too much because I don't want to waste all my gold. So I actually think a shrimp here because I talked about I wanted to sell this otter could actually be pretty strong. So I'm going to take this shrimp. He's a unit that whenever you sell a unit, he's going to he's going to give uh, plus one health to a random guy. So let's go ahead and combine here. See what we get. We get a giraffe, a great unit. Giraffe is a 2-5 tier three unit, right? Because we combined at that tier two to get a tier three. Uh, and at the end of your turn, he just gives a permanent plus one, plus one to the guy in front, which is really, really strong. Um, and I think the last three gold spending to get another otter is actually really strong here. The only negative that it has is that if it, out of the one out of four chance, 20% chance that it hits this guy, again, it's that wasted stats if I ever wanted to combine here. But I think it's still worth it because it'll, it'll <laughs> always happens. It always happens. Uh, it, 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 it guarantees us uh, a greater chance of winning in the short term. So, yeah, we've got good stats to win this round. I actually expect that we'll win this one. If we don't, um, I'll suck each and every one of my students off. Yeah, this guy bought a swan. Rather weak unit that gives you a lot of gold, but uh, weak in stats. So it doesn't really guarantee you wins in round. All right, we get our first win. Only nine more to go. Only nine more to go. All right, we see a new food in the shop. It's called a meat bone. If this guy has, if a unit has it, it gives him plus five attack. It's really good to give to a unit like a giraffe. Someone that you don't mind sticking around for a couple of rounds to buff up your dude. That then allows you to, uh, him to get a little bit extra attack for just three gold. Essentially three gold for plus five attack. It's pretty good. We're definitely going to schmeet this guy. You got to call it schmeet. Otherwise, it's not as effective. Um, you could definitely think about combining your shrimps. Go for a level two. I'm actually going to go ahead and do it so that we, when we roll, we have more chances with our last three gold to see another shrimp instead of if we freeze him now, we'd only have two shops. Uh, there are two, two spots in our shops. So you could definitely think about a crab and a meat here. Crab is a unit that anytime you buy him, he will copy the health from your most healthy friend, uh, from the dude with the most health. So I think you definitely could actually uh, buy a crab and then freeze a meat. He's a, he's a unit since he gets a lot of health. Really, really likes having meat. So I think I'm going to combine here. Buy a crab. Gives us an extra 3-8. Dude, really, really strong. And we have the meat to give him next turn. And we have two guys who are almost at their level two, if we see it in the shop, at that round five, where we'll start to see tier three units in the shop and then be able to scam it for a tier five, tier four. <clears throat> I never played Zerata Pets because I have a Mac. Uh, you can play on browser, man. Ooh, really good for us. Really good looking round for us. Trade with that guy. Trade with that guy. The giraffe cleans him up. That's win number two, dude. Is freezing free? Yeah, freezing is completely free. The cost is in uh, the spot that you're you're saving in the shop. So, uh, interesting time here. We now see a bunny in the shop or a rabbit. Anytime that anything eats food when the bunny's on the field, he'll give plus one health. Really good because a lot of things are already giving stats. It just 
adds on. It just adds on stats. So we've got the shrimp that wants to uh, give us plus one health whenever we sell. Let's sell the otter. Plus one health to the guy who likes health, sure. And then we buy the rabbit. We definitely, remember we talked, we wanted to give the meat to this guy, which also is going to give that extra HP. Another thing we have here is garlic armor. Really, really good if you go up against a person that likes to summon a lot of units. A horse build, a turkey build. Makes them take two less damage anytime they take damage by anything in the game. So, I'm actually going to give this guy some garlic. Also, we'll give him one health. And now we got two extra gold to just roll and find some really good units that we want to freeze. We're almost at a level three, so let's freeze this fish. Roll again. Uh. We can go for a level two shrimp. I don't think that's terrible. I think you could probably keep the shrimp for two rounds. I don't see the rabbit sticking around very long. Here's the pill. Makes a friendly unit faint. Don't really have a use for that right now. <clears throat> let's go ahead and go to this next round. Starting to get a little bit uh, scared about the quality of our build. This guy's got meat, so he's technically an eight, an eight damage guy. Still trade pretty well. Also, little known thing about, or little thing about uh, garlic armor is it the garlic armor will never reduce the damage that you take to zero. So you saw that guy had two, uh, two attack, and he still did one damage to me. So yeah, you'll never take zero from from having garlic. All right, let's go ahead and throw this combined here. Reason again, I'm not gonna combine here is because next round, round seven, odd rounds are better to go for level ups. Because round seven we'll see will be the first round that we'll be able to see tier five units. So we're actually gonna save it because now we've got three shot slots in the shop. It's pretty okay to roll with. I think this is a great combo we can run here as a little bit of ballast in the back. This is a good combo that I was the one that invented. I take full credit for it. Is the honey badger. So the badger, when he dies, he deals his attack to the people both in front of him, meaning the enemy, and behind him, meaning your ally. So putting him in the front can be a little bit dangerous. But if you put him in the back and then you put that honey pot on him that I talked about, he's now technically 10 damage worth of damage and he can deal damage to two people. And that B, a lot of times, you'll find if you run a honey badger, will a lot of times save you from taking some damage. And now we get the level three of the fish next round. Really good. I don't expect to keep the shrimp very long, so I'm not going to go for the level three. Here's another piece of food, a salad. Gives two random pets, plus one, plus one. Pretty good, especially if you're running that bunny that we talked about before. We could run a rat, but we don't really have a reason for it. Uh, the rat summons a guy for the enemy when he dies, but I don't see much reason for that. We don't have any triggers that work on that just yet. Um, yeah, fish is slowly getting getting juiced up here. Could definitely find a, a bison sometime soon. We'll talk about him if we find him. I'm sorry I'm not going over every single unit I find. I think that uh, might be just a little bit tedious, but maybe I, maybe I should be. I don't know. Crab doing work here with that meat on top of him, taking out everyone. We're up to four wins. All right, all right. All right, all right, all right. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get the combine here. We see a monkey. Monkey's going to give the person on the right, so your front unit, plus two, plus three at the end of every round. I love that unit. So let's go ahead and actually sell the shrimp. I think he's the least good unit that we have right now. Um, and also, one key note here is when you sell a unit, based on the level that they're at is how much gold you get. So since we just leveled him up and it cost us three gold, we now sell him and we get two gold, making it on only one gold transaction to scam it out a new unit. So let's take the monkey. We put the monkey out before we get the fish combined so that we make sure that the fit that this guy gets the level up. We see a cow, which will replace the food with one, two milks, which I think is a really, really good uh, benefit. So I would like to keep that for sure. Um, but I don't know what I want to sell for it just yet. So I'm gonna have to think about that. I think for now you can roll because if we did want to, if we did see a really, really good unit, we could sell one of our units for one gold and replace it. Let's go for that. Could get a level two giraffe. I think the giraffe is the next unit to be sold, actually. Now that we have the monkey to scale the front unit, I think you could possibly run a skunk as well, reducing the HP of uh, a random guy by a lot. I think a skunk could actually do really, really well on this team, especially going into the late game. Do I want to sell for a skunk right now? No, I think it's actually better if we don't, because I think the stats on this guy with the with the meat is actually really, really, really useful. Sec a level two badger. How good do we think a level two badger is here? I also don't think the badger is gonna be sticking around for long. I think he's 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 perfectly happy sticking around for a while, helping you out when he need be, and then he's not a unit that I'm gonna plan on keeping for super long. So let's keep rolling. All right. <clears throat> All right, we got a 15-19 lead in the charge with a bunch of attack in the back. Hopefully it's enough. 
Ooh, that's a dangerous unit here. We do trade with you, which is really good. And then we trade with you. And then we trade with you. And then we trade with you. Still a win, dude. We're up to five wins. Halfway to, halfway to the victory. I think we're doing pretty good. So, fun thing about the crab is whenever you buy another crab, if I were to buy this crab here, he recopies the health. So anytime you buy another crab, he's going to recopy that health. Key little thing there. Let's roll one time here. I want to roll one time. That is a good unit that we would love to see. So a bison says that anytime that you have a tier three unit on your squad, anytime you have a tier three unit on your, or level three, excuse me, level three unit on your squad, at the end of the turn, he's going to gain plus two, plus two. Really good. But there's also a piece of food that we just found over here that's a tier four food just showed up in the shop. Canned food makes all of your current and future pets in the shop have plus two, plus one. Cans are OP, Northern Lion viewers. All right. I know Northern Lion says, I underestimate the can, but then he never fucking uses them. He, he never uses them. And it, 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 it pisses me the fuck off. He's constantly buy selling, buy selling. Like, oh, we should run the dolphin now at, at round the fucking nine. Uh, okay, well, it'd be cool if your dolphin all of a sudden had more stuff. Here's the, here's, the, here's the tip I have. If you like the units that you have, people G's in chat. If you like the units that you have, you don't need to buy a can. But what have I been talking about? I don't see the giraffe sticking around for long. I don't see the badger sticking around for long, which means I'm going to have new guys coming in the future, which means that maybe a can is an investment since I got new dudes that I wanted to add to the team. So let's take the can. I think the best unit to sell here is the giraffe. Really, really nice to replace it with a bison. I'm going to put the bison in the third slot because right around this round is where you're going to see a lot of summon builds. And summon builds are very synonymous with splash damage because of a unit called the deer. That the deer, when he dies, summons a bus that does splash damage, which means he damages the guy he's attacking and the dude behind him. And this guy's a little bit fragile. If he takes too many hits from buses, he's going to die because it's five damage per hit from the bus to the guy in, in, the, in the back. But a dude who's a little bit more healthy can take a little bit of bus damage. All right, let's roll one more time to see what we can find. We could take a garlic for the bison. I don't think it's worth the freeze. I think there's better things that we could freeze. Um... So yeah, we're just going to end the turn. He's going to gain his plus two, plus two. The monkey's going to keep scaling the guy in the front. We're f officially scaling, ladies and gentlemen. People claps. Ooh, garlic armor is going to do great here. Again, summon builds, garlic armor eats it up. Look, look. Every single time, I take two less damage. Oh, he's giving him plus one. It's still one damage. It's still one damage. It's still one damage. We're owning. Trades with the, uh, trades with the ox. Ox is a very powerful unit fact that that crab traded with it we're now at six if i was a northern line if i was bald had no hair <clears throat> that would be a believer payout but unfortunately not here not on the stream okay now we're at round nine where we can start seeing once again new level of pets and as well as new level of food the food that you see at level five this is the best food chocolate gives your pet one experience that experience being this bar up here so if i wanted a level two crab Boom, level two crab. He's really, really good. Uh, so what we're going to want to do here is we're definitely going to want to, um, we're going to want to get, we're going to want to buy this cow here. But the cow is going to replace the food in my shop with his milk, her milk, excuse me. So we want to use the chocolate if we want to use it first. What unit are we most likely going to want to level up here? I would say probably the monkey or the bison. Both of these units, when they level up, they give increased number of stats. The bison will go from buffing himself plus two, plus two, to plus four, plus four, and plus six, plus six at level three. The monkey's going to go from plus two, plus three, to plus, uh, I believe, um, plus four, plus six. <laughs> so I think the that amount of stats is a little bit better. That instead of it being a plus two, plus two in terms of level up, uh, it is a plus two, plus three in terms of level up. So I'm going to go ahead and level up the monkey. Then we're going to sell the badger. Thank you, badger. Frost P7. <clears throat> we summon this guy. We get two milkies. You could either give the milk to the fish or you could give the milk to the bison. I'm going to do both to the fish here because he's currently still got that that uh, that garlic armor. <clears throat> Things we're looking for here on a roll. You could take a scorpion. Scorpion technically doesn't have an ability. Technically doesn't, but he starts with peanuts. He's the only unit in the game that has peanuts, which will, uh, if he damages you, you're dead. He just, he just straight up poisons you. You got a, you got a peanut allergy. You're dead. Uh, we could take a parrot. Copies the ability of the dude in front of them in combat. Not really useful. We don't have any person with an in-combat ability. Uh, so let's roll one more time. Could go with a can here. We're Right now, we're sitting at, at nine lives, right? 
So we could roll for something higher tier, right? Because we could, at next round, we'd be at two gold, sell this guy for one gold, put out a good unit, right? We could. But at nine lives, we're currently many, many losses away from losing. So this is where you get to invest in the future scaling of your team. Instead of going for, I need something to win me this round, I need something for to give me 10 wins, AKA maybe a can. I think cans are really, really good. Again, the cow's not a mainstay. I think the crab's life is coming to an end. So I think that we've got, we've got slots coming up. Monkey scale and bison scale and we're doing all right. <clears throat> hey, remember we talked about that bus right there. He can take it. Bison's still a little bit fragile. Look at the fish. Doing great, doing great work, doing good shit. <clears throat> All right. Coming in on another round. We see sushi. Another tier five. Uh, another great, 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 great tier five food. If you have the any sort of like bunny or if you already have a black cat right now, which is a tier six unit. Uh, really, really good food. And it's good if like you just roll down to three gold and you're like, dang, I haven't done anything this round. Might as well just give some sushi to everyone. Again, though really important. It's better if you have units that you plan on keeping. Right now, I don't think the crab should stick around too much longer. Don't think the cows should stick around too much longer. If I were to see another crab, though, we'd love to level it up next round. Actually, no. You don't even need to level it up next round because next round, you see tier sixes and there's no tier sevens. So on round uh, nine and past nine, you don't really need to worry about only leveling up on odd rounds. So let's roll here. We get another chocolate. We definitely, again, we talked about it. We want to use it on that monkey. Now he's a tier two monkey. He's gonna give plus four, plus six to the guy in front. Hyper scaling. We see a dragon in the shop. Dragon says he's a tier six unit. And anytime that you buy a tier one unit, he's gonna he's gonna give plus one plus one to all your dudes. Very, very, very strong. And he's a 10-10. I actually think that this is really, really good. And I think this is worth taking, especially for the fact that we've bought a bunch of cans. We bought two cans. Meaning that the tier ones that we buy aren't even that bad. They're not even that bad. So let's take the sell on this. Let's buy this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to actually freeze and we're going to roll. We're not going to sell this guy yet because having this mosquito is not enough better than having the crab. So I would like to roll once. See if we get anything really good. You could buy a pear here. It's plus two, plus two. Could buy a chili pepper, give splash attack, that thing that the bus had. You could. You definitely could. I also think that freezing the duck and continuing to roll is really, really powerful here. Look, we're getting levels. We're getting everything that we need. And now we're preparing for that next round. Because again, like I said, we could even get the crab level up. I think that's pogged up. You crab level up, then you sell them. It's only one gold for... Uh, uh, actually, no, it's not... It's not that good for the level up because you're only going to see another tier six unit. Actually not good. Don't do it. It's cringe. But we we take the chocolate so we could possibly give it to the dragon. So he gives plus two, plus two to everyone. And then we uh, froze a bunch of tier one units. And again, we're at nine. We're at nine hearts. If we lose a round, we're, we're losing the round consciously via the method of wanting to play better in the future rounds. This guy trades right here quite nicely, doesn't he? Oh, it's one damage off. Big Bono strats. I did a YouTube video on that recently. Listening to the Big Bono strats. I, I, you know what? I respect the fact that I lose to a Big Bono. If I'm going to lose, it better to be my own damn teachings. But I don't even lose. Dr. Otto Pertussis. Can't fucking lose. I better lose to my own damn teaching. I better lose to my own damn teaching. All right. Chocolate, over to you, my friend. Time for the crab to go. Frost P7's in chat. We're gonna buy one of you. It's a simple method. You buy it and you sell it. And you buy it and you sell it. Now, here's the point. You could buy this mosquito here, or you can think about buying what we call a one round Andy, meaning that they only are there for one singular round and they're more useful than something like a mosquito in order to guarantee you a win. I think a fly, tier six unit, whenever someone dies, for the first three units that die, you will summon a five five in its place. It's just really good stats. So we're going to freeze that guy and then we're going to roll and see if we get anything else that we think could be a pogged up one round unit. I think that a turtle can definitely be that over a fly because he can give melon armor to the guy behind him, meaning that he takes 20 less damage on his first hit. And so we're going to give the turtle 
a melon armor buff to the bison. I think that's really, really, really good. Now let's unfreeze you because we want to see more slots next round. <clears throat> fly turkey. Could have. Could have had turkey fly. Not bad. Trades well there. Turtle gives the melon armor, meaning he doesn't take damage at all to that guy. We do lose this round. All right, we lost. That guy is a very powerful team. Again, game is RNG. We're not, we're not, we're focused on winning as many, as many rounds as possible. Dude, look at this. You get the dragon level up. Boom. Now you can sell him. You know, buy this dude. Plus two, plus two to all your guys. Now, buy this. And freeze this guy right here. Okay, here's what we do. This guy, you can't combine here. So uh, we're definitely selling you. And we're doing the one round Andy strat once again. What would be good for one round? And I think now it's actually the zombie fly. I think zombie fly would be perfect here. But here's the kicker. We're not putting zombie fly all the way in the back. Why? Because one singular unit exists called the alligator that does eight damage to the unit in the back at the beginning of the round. And we don't want that. Um, and we don't want that simply because if he gets sniped, his ability doesn't go off in combat. Now we still could get sniped by the dolphin, which uh, which which does damage to the guy in the um, does damage to the guy in the that has the lowest HP. But we can't stop that. We're just increasing the odds that we don't lose, right? Increasing the odds doesn't need to be a hundred percent. Okay, so let's freeze the horse because he's a tier one unit for that dragon. Now something to note here: the fish is currently two health away from being max stats on his HP. 50-50 is the highest you can get. So this monkey right here isn't as useful going on him. So let's reverse the order of these so that the bison gets a little bit of an extra buff. And then let's uh, let's roll it out. Yeah, so we don't mind. If, if one unit's going to get sniped, if this guy gets sniped by a leveled up alligator, we would rather it be that guy, right? This is pretty annoying. This is pretty annoying since we haven't gotten a melon armor buff of ourselves. We trained a little bit scarily there, but overall we're doing really, really good and still end up with the win because we traded the units into a correct order. That's eight wins. We're moving on towards the 10. <sighs> Double chocolate and a monkey. We can get a level three monkey here. We could get a level three monkey here. Is that more worth than getting plus two, plus two to everybody? I think it is actually. Again, because we have room to lose. So let's go for the level three monkey. Now giving plus six, plus nine. Say it. Say the word. Say the word. Say it. Say it. Say the thing. Or you're kicked out of my class. Uh, uh. Here's something actually pogged up here that we could do. We're at one gold. And we didn't get any value out of this dragon. And we could wait until next round to get value out of the dragon. Or we could take a really cool unit called the leopard. The leopard at the start of the battle deals... 50% of his attack damage to one, two, or three units, depending on his level. So I think that you could sell the dragon here. Put the leopard up front so he gets the monkey buff. And then unfreeze this guy. Might have been smarter here to put this guy up here in, in the second position. So if there's a bus that he gets hit with that. <clears throat> Not that useful of a hit here. Not that useful. Do trade quite nicely here. Actually, the fly was goaded. And we tie this round. We tie this round. Also, I realized that I haven't been on this the entire time. Sorry for the window at the top. Nervous. So this guy's going to get super duper buffed. At this point, there's multiple things that we're looking for. I'm going to... Uh, uh, so at this point, there's, there's multiple things that we're looking for. The zombie fly was good to us. But it doesn't need to stick around. It doesn't. It wasn't that good. It was really good in that specific round... But it wasn't that OP. It was 15, 15 extra stats. It's like OP as fuck as a one round unit. But all in all, not that good. There is a tier six unit sitting here in the shop called the snake that says deal five damage to a random enemy whenever the person ahead of you attacks. And we've got a lot of guys that like to attack multiple times. So that can be a good thing. Not only the leopard is really good at this, but also the, uh, the snake is really good at hitting dudes. Not necessarily because of sniping people to death. It, it can be, right? If you're against a summon squad, it can snipe the turkeys in the back and the tigers in the back and the parrots in the back and all of the things that make summoning builds more cancerous. 
but it can also snipe away melon armor, which is really, really key late in the game. That thing that says the first time you take damage, take 20 less. It's really, really key because if they don't have melon and I do, all of a sudden I'm at a strict advantage. So I think something like you could be really good. So let's sell here. Let's buy you, put you behind. I would say probably we'll order it like this. I think this is probably best. And now we want to roll and see if we can't get a level up on one of those two units. Or if we just get some good foods. Not seeing anything super pogged up here. The mushroom gives your person an extra life. They spawn back with plus one, plus one. Not super useful, my pen but... Is still on the floor. I got it. Yeah. Please stop dropping your pen. I would really appreciate that. The mushroom here actually is a pretty good take. Because that thing that we were talking about, that dolphin. If someone were to have a dolphin and they were to snipe this snake, he could get spawned back and continue to fire off stuff. Or if there was a round of buses that came through, he could definitely do it. But I don't think that it's worth unless worth over if I were to see a leopard chocolate in the next roll. And therefore, I want both of these food slots opened up, not frozen. So I think we're going to roll here since six gold could still give us a level two on one of those two units. We don't get either of them. So at this point, since we're not on lethal, you could buy a can, but I'm kind of liking my units right now. You could buy a pizza, which gives plus two, plus two to random units, but my units are pretty fucking jacked as it is. So I think we're going to continue to roll. And we've got six gold to spend in order to find a couple of good level ups. None of these units seem all that useful. Again, we're just looking for the pairs of units that we currently have. Chocolate, pogged up. And here's a choice that we have. We can either freeze that and continue to roll to look for a pair of a unit that we could level up right? So like, let's say we're going to look for a snake or a leopard. And if we find one of those next round, we're going to level them up. We could do that. But another choice that you have, which I think in my opinion is better is because chocolate can show up so frequently and it's only two slots available to, to show up in is to spend your last three gold to give someone that can buff or excuse me, that, that chocolate buff in order to then free up that spot for rolling next round. Does that make sense? Because chocolate shows up a hell of a lot later in the game. It's a very useful unit or a very useful tool in order to level up your units. It's more gold efficient. It, it, it's whatever, whatever. He gets plus two, plus two still. He gets plus six, plus nine. Very nice. He's now going to be doing 14 damage in this game. Um, actually, fun fact, Super Auto Pets rolls up in any sort of tie scenarios, unlike a lot of games out there, which is pretty pogged up. He's got his own snake, which is actually pretty scary. <clears throat> Because his snake is level two. And he does die to the buses. He does die to the bus. Here comes the big old honey badger. Remember how I said the honey badger is very deadly. Putting us on lethal. Meaning that the next time we lose, it could mean death. And look at that. Beautiful. Chocolate immediately leveling you up. <clears throat> leveling you up. Really want that level two snake if we can find it. I think I am going to do this now. And because we haven't seen melon armor, I'm going to give this guy garlic as well. I think that's pretty good. We're doing... When you're on lethal, you have to play a little bit differently. When you're on the point that you're going to die if you lose the next round, you can't do those things that I was talking about where I have to do things that I can plan for the future. It's a little bit more risky to do because you're not doing what's best in the here and now. And the best thing here and now was to give my units some food and to, to try to increase my odds of winning right here, right now. And I think that our odds with the level up, especially on the leopard, and he's dealing 17 damage to two dudes, that's pretty pogged up. He could, he could single-handedly wipe out a summoning build. Look at this. Boom. He's, he snipes the melon armor. Very important. Very important. Extremely important. Look at this. Look, look, look. Trades. Trades. Boom. That's nine wins. Like I said, very important. We're doing good stuff. Nine wins. I think if you're getting nine wins on the first round that you start out in on the day after you watch this video, tweet it at me. Because fuck, man. That's awesome. That's so good. All right, here we could go for stats, actually. I think that on this final round, you could look for the level up on the snake, but I think also buying really, really, really good foods when you're on lethal, like a pizza, that gives plus two, plus two to two dudes is very, very useful. So let's roll again. Don't see anything here that I want. You could take a tiger. Tiger says that the dude in front repeats their next ability or their ability as if they are, um, as if they are level one. Here's my argument why we're not going to do that. Because you could put him behind the leopard, right? And then the leopard gets an extra 18 damage shot off. That's pretty pogged up. 
You could put it behind the, the snake, and the snake then gets some extra shots up. Pretty pogged up. My argument against that is, because we had that dragon earlier, that monkey's actually pretty good backline, backline stuff. He, he's pretty good at finishing off the rest of the pack if he goes up against some backline units. So I actually think he's better. Um, someone in chat asked a good question. Why snake in front of bison? So one of the things we talked about with the snake is the snake, similar to leopard, is really good at knocking out uh, melon armors and knocking out people in the back, making it easier for su against summoning builds and things like that in order to... Yo, why blow? Like you go for a second. I put the reminder in my calendar. I even got the chance Much to love. watch a few streams this Much month. Much love, dude. Thank love you. the SDSA 1 to A20 stream. THX for the pog content. No problem. Um, so what I was saying was, is he's really good at sniping melon armors. Which in this case, what would you rather have? Him snipe a melon armor and then die to the unit that had melon armor? And then this guy gets to trade favorably? Or this guy trades with the melon armor, right? It, it's just like a little bit... It's just like a little bit better, right? In my opinion, in the in the the professor's opinion. All right, let's roll one more time. Can't level up the monkey anymore. We're chilling. I think that a chili pepper on him could be really, really good. But I really want to look for a melon armor. I really, really want this guy to get melon armor if we can. Look at that. Beautiful. Drop him the melon. He now takes 20 less damage on his first hit, which means the first thing that hits him isn't going to kill him. He isn't going to kill him because the most damage you can get hit with is 50. So he's going to live his first hit unless he gets sniped by like a mosquito or another leopard or a snake, etc. Et so, yeah. Good shit. He's not going to die on his first hit. That is a very powerful 21 damage to two dudes. He's actually going to do one damage over Melon Armor, which is incredible. Look, they also got their guy. Hit the guy in the back. Damn, that would have been sick though. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, the snake! Oh! Hey, oh! no, I haven't subbed often, but I'm a huge YouTube content watcher and I want to support you. Dr. Auto Pertussis, Super Auto Pets, over explained run. I hope you learned something today. I hope you learned something about Super Auto Pets.